let's look at a few of the extra um, bits and pieces we need to get this job done. I'll just start with the workshop manual. It really does help getting everything sorted out. Um, let's go to the torques section. For this job, you need lots of torques. Uh, I think just about every bolt is uh, torques. So, I mean, if you've got an assortment of torques, um, you probably, you will need it or you won't get this job done. It's um, just as simple as that. And you need uh, extra extension bars and things like that because there's a lot of tight places to get into and to short ratchet. Um, we've got some other bits here. You do need a torque wrench for a few of the um, exhaust manifold pieces. I mean, marking pens and things like that always help. Just gloves and cleaning, uh, cleaning bits and pieces because it is um, it is pretty dirty in a part of the cut, like in this part of the car. Um, another can of this. Uh, this 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 is great for cleaning out the exhaust manifold and the turbocharger. I'll show you later. And just another can of um, a can of parts cleaner. I definitely would not start the project unless you want to do some like serious cleaning and things because um, you, you can really uh, you can really uh, get in there and clean out all the black soot. Um, a can of uh, WD-40 or some sort of part spray because uh, when, when you're dealing with the exhaust components, um, things can a lot of the bolts and things can be seized up. So you may you want to definitely spray them because you don't want to strip any of the um, the parts. And while I'm talking about that, uh, I've just got a picture of the copper bolts here because uh, there's a few parts that are held down by copper bolts and they are they are tight, they are hard to release. So um, you don't want to thread these because the, the material itself is already soft. And uh, if you apply too much force, you're just going to rip it off and um, it's going to cause you all kinds of trouble. And another important thing I just want to bring up too is um, if you lose these bolts, your magnetic tool is not going to be able to pick them up. So you've got to be really careful with these because uh, if you if it goes in a hole or something and you can't get it out, well, you're really stuck because the, the magnet isn't going to pick anything up. Like, for example, it works here, it works here, but when you go to the copper, it's, it's not going to pick it up. So just be mindful of that. Um, be very careful when you're dealing with these copper bolts. Uh, I've got a can of uh, ceramic paint. Um, I'm going to try and paint the exhaust manifold just to just to see how it turns out. And um, obviously, all our gaskets and things here. Um, if you looked at my first video, uh, I did get some extra. There was an extra pair of gaskets that I did need for the oil return lines. So um, that's just one extra little bit. Of, little bit of information. Um, I'll probably repeat that a few times. Uh, I'll go through all the gaskets and things that are used up. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you will need all the, your toolbox, obviously. And uh, one other thing too is, I definitely recommend a good work light because for this project, you're gonna be spending uh, about 50% of the time in the engine bay, but you're gonna be spending 50% of the time underneath the car too. So you need a good work light. Um, especially when getting at the turbocharger and the alternator and things. So uh, that's all the parts and things we need to. So the first thing you want to do is you want to disconnect the battery negative lead and isolate it. Uh, the reason that this is really important for the project is because uh, you're going to be dealing with the alternator. So you really want to um, just make sure your electrical system is isolated. Um, we've just got the wheel chocks on here. We've got, got the car jacked up. Uh, I don't know if you can see the axle stands but I've got them positioned from behind the front wheels uh, the reason being you're going to need a lot of space under the engine bay I've got the cardboard laid down and I've got the jack basically positioned the jack is positioned where the turbocharger is um, your head is basically going to be right underneath the car there so to me that's just a safety measure um, having having the axle stands and the jack positioned there um, and one other uh, trick that I've just got here is uh, I've got the fan running. I have had the car engine running and the, the exhaust is still still a little bit hot. So I've just got the fan running as fast as possible to cool everything down. Um, so the first, start, first part of the project is uh, we're going to be starting from the top of the engine bay and uh, removing a lot of things to make a lot of space. Uh, like I'm going to say this a few times, I'm not going to follow the Haynes manual as perfectly as possible because uh, 
I like to make a bit more space and I like to make it easy on myself, even if that means removing a few more parts. So I'm sort of going to show you the way that I do it. And um, the first thing, obviously, with all Mercedes jobs is to take off the air cleaner. Okay, so now you've removed the air cleaner and the engine cover. The next thing to do is to get this uh, induction hose out of the way. And to do that, you're going to have to cut the cable ties. There might be something that's holding uh, this wiring loom in place. Uh, I've sort of marked it in yellow where you need to go. Uh, you need to cut the table ties and to get the loom out of the way. Uh, you've also got this breather hose here that will need to come off. So you can see I've got a hose clamp here. There's a sensor plug and I've just marked it in yellow also. So all this has to come off. I've just got it marked here. Here's the um, induction hose that's uh, bolted to the turbocharger. That's the hose clamp that you have to undo to remove the rest of the induction hose. Uh, once you've got that off, you can just remove the whole section and put it aside. Uh, they don't talk about this much in the Haynes manual, but uh, for me, it makes a lot of room and you're gonna be working in this whole section anyway, so you're gonna need as much room as possible. And one other extra tip I've got for you is all these bolts and things in here, you're probably gonna be removing them at some point. And you can see uh, over here at the exhaust pipe, there's the, the, the bolt that I've sprayed already. You, you wanna spray the bolts with your uh, WD-40 or your parts lubricant, because all these ones uh, on the exhaust, exhaust section, they can be stubborn, they can be tight to remove. And those bolts there are copper bolts so they'll need to be renewed. Um, I'll put the part number up uh, for these parts. But now, now's a good time. Uh, once everything is cooled down in the exhaust section, uh, spray it with your lubricant and make sure all the bolts are um, easy to get to uh, because you don't want any breakages because that's an absolute nightmare. Okay, for this next part, you want to start removing the vacuum hoses. You've got a vacuum hose here. Uh, for the, um, the, uh, the wastegate accutator. You've got uh, these bolts here. I've, I've tried to mark everything in yellow as much as possible. You want to take off this heat shield and you've got uh, this, this other vacuum line in here that I've marked down in here in yellow. Uh, there's a cable tie or a clamp you'll have to remove and you follow it back here. And this is the boost pressure, pressure sensor. Uh, you'll have to take the plug off and um, these bolts in here too. Uh, you'll see this sensor, it connects connects to the turbocharger and it's and it's on a crimped, the line is crimped, you can see it here. So you just want to let it, uh, you want to remove it from here. I've got a picture of here and what I've got marked in yellow is the uh, belt tensioner. And what you'll need to do is have a breaker bar or a socket arm that's uh, very long and you'll need a four millimeter uh, drill bit. And the reason you need those is because to release the tensioner uh, in clockwise direction, you'll need to place, uh, if, if you can see that um, that bolt uh, that bolt head that's sticking out, uh, you'll need to place the 17 millimeter socket on that and crank it clockwise. Once you've done that, you'll need to insert a, 14, uh, a four millimeter drill bit into the tensioner to hold it in place and that, that will basically unlock the belt tension. Um, it seems like a complicated thing to describe but I'll put the tools on there and I'll show you what I mean. Um, I've just got a quick, I'll quickly show you here. So I've got the breaker bar and I've got the four millimeter drill bit. Uh, if you can see that's a multi hex head uh, 17 millimeter socket and I'll show you what you need to do to take the belt tension off. Uh, so this job here, it actually, it requires two hands to do the job. You need one hand to push the tensioner across in the clockwise direction. And with your other hand, you're going to have to insert, you're going to have to push in the four millimeter drill bit into that hole, which locks it in the open place. So it removes all the bent belt tension. I, ca I can't show you because um, I'm holding the camera and things like that. But what you can see here is you just put the breaker bar on that bolt, on that extension bolt and you push it clockwise, and then once you've pushed it clockwise, hold it and insert the four millimeter drill bit, and there you have it. Uh, no, no extra tweaking is required, and you can basically, you can leave the tools there. You don't have to remove the entire belt, you don't have to strip the belt off all the pulleys, you just slacken it off, that's it, because all we're removing is the alternator. Uh, you don't have to go out of your way and replace the entire belt. I mean, 
now would be a good time to replace a worn belt or an old belt if you wanted to um, but we're sort of we're not working on that on this project so you can see there I've just released the tension on the belt uh, the drill bit is held in place and that's as far as you need to go uh, the belt is sl slack now uh, so we need to get under the car to remove the alternator that's the next step